Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those that are here live with us in our studio audience and also those that are watching us live. In today's show, we're going to talk, talk about something that's extremely important. Now, on our day to day, when we watch TV, we hear a lot about the government. We hear a lot about the economy. We hear a lot about a lot of things except for one important thing that's happening to our everyday family, and it's, it's today's family unit. And so today, I think it's important that we talk about today's family unit. What struggles are they going through? How are they trying to make it day to day? And how can we, why, how can we help them move, move past some of their challenges and some of their struggles? So today, today's topic is empowering today's family unit. Now, we had the rare opportunity to have Chris Hall, the owner and operator of Rocky Mountain Service Employment Re Redevelopment Service with us today to talk to us a little bit further about what the family unit is going through and how can we help them get through? So without further ado, please help me in welcoming Chris Hall. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing good, and you, Maurice? I'm doing well. That's Thank you good. for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So before we get into today's topic, give, me, uh, give us a little bit of background on you. How did you get into this uh, important role? And you know, what does it mean to, to everything that you're doing? Well, I am a little Chicago boy coming all the way from the south side of Chicago. I went to Colorado, University of Colorado in 1990, got recruited to play football. I only stayed playing football for three years. The reason being that I quit is that I wanted to concentrate on my academics more so than athletics. Okay. I saw a lot of guys that went off to play professional football before, before me, and they came on back and said, you know what, I was only pro for three years. So I had to come back to school to try to get my education. I said, well, you know, I'm not blessed in that way to have the academic prowess to go pro. Sure. So let me just concentrate on my academics. And so that's what I did. I quit football to concentrate on academics. I got a bachelor's in accounting then went off and get a master's in taxation. From there, I knew that I had a true calling on my life to do something special to, to families. So I kind of started my own tax practice and giving back to individuals, but I also along the way started working for various organizations. My first nonprofit organization I worked for was University of Colorado okay. Foundation as I was getting my master's. Gotcha. Then I work, went on to work for the Urban League of Metropolitan Denver and now here at Rocky Mountain Sare. Started off here at Rocky Mountain Sare as a CFO okay. um, because like you said, my background is in finance. Sure. Then I had the opportunity to now take this organization to a whole different level. I've been the CEO for Rocky Mountain Sare for two years now. so. It's been an awesome opportunity, and, and I'm just taking the bulls by his horn right now. <laughs> now, how long has the organization been around? The organization has been around for 37 years. We started in 1980. We are a war and poverty organization. We started, our first original name was called Jobs for Progress, Inc. And Jobs for Progress was a, a, um, a movement, as I would say, in the um, migrant community. Our first grant was a migrant farm worker um, um, jobs for progress program that was funded through Department of Labor. Okay. That program was saying, hey, you migrant farm workers that you come from Texas or Arizona up to Colorado and do the farming labor, we don't want you to go back to Texas or back to Arizona. We want you to have a viable job experience or get some work experience, meaning that let's say that a farm worker's desire was to be a truck driver. Sure. We will send that, that, that farm worker to truck driving school to help them get that certification. We have some that want to become a nurse. We will send them to nursing school so they can get their certification because the idea is say, hey, we don't want you in that hard manual labor type job. Sure. We want to give you, get you a much more um, enrichment type um, work so you can make more money and have a much better living. Gotcha. So that's what the Rocky Mountain Sea originally started in 1980. Then, then the, at that time, the CEO then, they said, okay, let's get into early childhood education. In 1984, we picked up our first Head Start grant. Okay. And from there, we just been growing and expanding throughout the state of Colorado. All the way up until um, 2013 or 2014, we were serving over 2,276 kids throughout the state of Colorado. Gotcha. We're located in Green Junction, we're located in Denver, we're located in Pueblo, Walsamer, Trinidad, Alamosa, um, Conejos County, uh, Fruta, 
parachute, rifle. Well, we Walsenburg, spread through right? all over. Walsenburg. Yes, that's right. Okay. Walsenburg. So, yeah. So, you guys have a very big organization with a very huge mission Correct. that goes with it. Correct. So if we talk about the mission, if we take it to the, to the next level, which is the evolution of the family unit. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you think about the kids, I know, we have, we're, and we're going to get to that next. Well, let's think about the family unit. Let's think about the, the father and mother. Correct. What pressures are they going through? Why is your organization able to help these families? What are they going through right now? You know, the evolution of, of the family unit, we would say one, once in point in time, it was just only father and mother. Um, and then the children. As time and society has go on, now you are seeing single parents. You will see um, two female as parents or two male as parents, whatever the dynamic is. Sometimes now you see children being raised by grandparents, foster care, different things of that nature. Rocky Mountain is there to support that family unit whenever which way possible. If that father needs a job, we are there to help that father get a job. If that mom needs a job, we're there to help that mom get a job. If that mom needs some more supportive services to be on WIC or to be on TANF or whatever the case may be, sure. we, have, we have services to try to help them get that additional services. The main thing is to help the parents be parents so the, chill out, so the child can be a child. Sure. The, the, the problem is, as we see in a society, is children cannot be children because true. of the stress of the family dynamics. And what kind of stress are they running into? Like you said, am I able to eat? Hmm. We deal with homelessness. Where am I going to sleep? Those are some very serious issues that we're really dealing with in today's time. We're dealing with a lot of families right now. 10% of our family population is homeless. Hmm. So a lot of children don't know what meal that they're going to have. We provide three meals a day, a breakfast, a lunch, and a snack. Mm. And when they go home, they may not even be able to eat dinner. But at least we know when they're in our care, they're able to have a, a very nutritious meal. And so, are, and so are these parents feeling the impact of them not being able to provide for these kids, for their children? Yes, they, they, they are. They are. And... Some programs you, you may um, send your child to for early childhood education, for preschool, they don't do what we do. We have a special mix, and I would say a special curveball that's there, that special sauce. What is that special sauce? <laughs> yeah. We have that special sauce. We got the special sauce. We got that special <laughs> sauce. Because when we take care of the child during the day from 8 to 2, we also got them from 2 to 6 for our uh, Kathy Scholars Academy where we're teaching a 3-year-old how to prepare a meal. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Yes. we also tackling childhood obesity during that time frame. Because as you know, in a regular school system, there is no PE anymore. That's right. Kids are not active. But doing our after-school program model, the KSA model, from 2 to 6, they're active. They are out doing the things that they should be doing. They're exerting that energy that normally they don't usually exert. We have a parent in, in, our, in our program where her, she said that my, it was so hard for me to get my daughter to go to sleep by 11 o'clock. Hmm. A three to five year old child staying up to five o'clock, that is not normal. Right. But ever since that she got enrolled in our program, she is going to sleep at seven or eight o'clock at the normal time because she's now exerting that necessary energy. That's right. You know, in the regular, also in the school system, a lot of times they, they eat the processed foods. They storing up those carbs and storing up those sugars right. where it's hard for the child. If the child is not active, they're not burning it as well. That's right. So in our program, we are really working with them on how to eat. Where does this vegetable come from? We also teaching them to plant the, the, the seed in the ground and how it's going to grow and flourish and take what they had just planted from the farm, for, I'll say from the farm or from the garden to the table. Now it's time to eat what you have just cultivated. Gotcha. And that's a big deal. So when we're talking about children, so let's think about it. If, my, if the parents are gone and they're stressed from work, are they, getting the, are they receiving the emotional attention that they need from their parent, the children receiving the emotional um, attention from the parent? When a parent is stressed out dealing with their everyday life, they're not giving that child the necessary attention. So guess what? 
I love technology, and I believe in technology. But what has happened over the years, we have let the technology be the, the teacher of the children, except for us That's being right. the teacher of the children. That's right. We as parents are supposed to be the first teacher of our child. And so that's what we're trying to get back to. Let's take the technology and the iPads away from them and let them concentrate on how can I teach my child. At three, between the ages of three to five, we even seen homework help. We seen homework packages home with the child for the parent to work with that child with. Mm. So this is also dealing with parent engagement. The parent has to get into the education of that child so they can succeed in life. That's right. How, how important is that engagement? Do you feel like without that engagement, it messes up the, ch the child's development? Totally, it does. Because what we're doing now is not only teaching the child um, education, but we're also educating the parent. Mm. Because when they leave us after, uh, after five years old and they go into kindergarten, we still want to instill in them that value system. Be engaged in yes. your child's ed education, whatever they may be. Go to the parent-teacher meetings. Be involved into the PTA meetings. Know what's going on in that school. That's right. So that would be a, a, a greater help in that child's development. My children, you know, one thing that I did um, as, as, as we was raising our children is that I would go up to the school. You should see the faces of my children when you show up to the school. <laughs> Not the more so, not the more the scared piece, but they're proud. Sure. They're proud yeah. that mommy and daddy is here at the school. Yeah. A child want to show off. That is true. They, they, they <laughs> into showing off yeah. their children, their, their parents, who their siblings are. Yeah. If a parent would just show up to the school to give that type of support to the child, watch how far that child is going to go, grow in their learning. That's true. That's true. And while we're on this topic, I want to take you guys to this scripture here, which is Proverbs 22, 6. And it reads, start children off the way they should go. And even when they're old, they won't turn from it. What are your thoughts about that scripture? I'm going to take that strip scripture and put it to um, our organization. Okay. We also rolling out a program we'll just call early childhood education, which is going to begin from infants to three years old. And then we're gonna take our preschool model from three to five. We wanna stop the, start the education at the three, at the infant level. Or even, we can serve the pregnant moms. Here's an idea. When a child is in a certain environment, they start picking up sounds and movement and different things of that nature. We want to continue that same environment as a child is born all the way up until fifth grade on, a, I mean, five years old on, on continuing. In doing so, we're educating that child from, from the very beginning. Once we educate them from the very beginning, they will not leave from what they have been taught. That's right. You can give a person education. You can give them knowledge. But there's one thing that no one can take away from them is a sound mind and an education. We're teaching the kids, go get your education. Yeah. You can be whoever you want to be as long as you put your mind to it. If you want to be the next president, you can be it. Right. We instill that into our kids today. If you want to be a doctor, you can be it. If you want to be a professional athlete, you, you can, can be, be it. it. Yeah. You can do it. We talk nothing but positivity in these child's lives. We're not going to say, no, you can't do it because you don't know your one, two, threes or your ABCs. We're going to say, no, you can do it because we're going to sit here and work with you on your ABCs and one, two, threes. That's right. I feel like I can do it now. You know? <laughs> I'm there. I'm ready. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take about it. Let's take about it. Uh, since we're talking about a scripture, let's take about it. Let's, lo let's look at it from a... Lord and enemy point of view. Correct. How would the enemy pick up on this scripture? Okay, let's, let me show you an illustration right here. If the enemy has a child in the moment where he's stressed, where a child is obese, where a, where a child feels abandoned even by his parents, this seven-year-old, if it's not touched on at this particular time, have you ever seen a 35-year-old still have that same 
same feeling of being abandoned? Okay, that scripture, you'll live it out one way or the other. Either it's good or it's bad, but somehow or another, you will live the scripture out. So if we don't have services, if we don't have organizations such as these to pick up that slack to help these children, this is, where, this is what you'll see. When you think about today's jail system and everything that's going on out here, this is the manifestation that's happening right now. This is the cycle. And so whatever's happening in that youth, if it's not dealt with by somebody, somewhere, somehow, it will show up in their adult lives and they will, they will manifest it and keep on, keep the cycle going. That's what the enemy wants. And that's what we as a, as a, as a people, we need to actually surround ourselves around organizations such as this to help them push through and survive. So I want to take this scripture and see what you have to say about this. And this is Isaiah 55, 8 through 10. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it <clears throat> without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Now, how does that impact your school? Now, before I touch on that scripture, can okay. I go back to the previous slide? Because you, you said something very powerful. Okay. During those very few stages of life, a child is forming their identity. That's right. And if a person, if a parent is saying that you ain't going to be nothing, that child nine times out of ten is not going to be nothing. If that parent is saying you're ugly, that child is going to say, think that they're not ugly and they're going to use their body to attract men or women because they're going to say you're beautiful. And we That's don't right. want that to, to, to evolve into that child's life. We plant so many valuable seeds in this early ages of a, of a child's life where the enemy can come and water those seeds that was once planted in that child's right. life and it could go grow in a bad way. That's right. We don't want the negative seed planted that's going to affect that child in a bad way. We want the positive seed planted so God can put the, the nutrients onto that seed so That's it can right. flourish into something great. That's so right. let's go on to your next slide. Right. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways. We all have a calling in our life. And a calling is when you serve something that have a higher purpose that is greater than you. We all have a calling on our life. In that scripture, it says that the Lord thoughts is greater than your thoughts. You don't know what I have in store for you right. is what the Lord says. But if you just have faith in me and lean on me, I'm going to direct your path. Your ways is not going to be my ways. You're not going to think of the things or situation or circumstances that I have in your life is going to be something that you're going to like. Right. Let me give you this example. Um, if you like to cook, per se, and I know you like to eat because you're pretty, cook pretty eat, big. You know, you know, I got to pass brother. out if I don't. You okay. Know, that's the whole thing. <laughs> so if you take a stick of butter and just ate it by itself, would it taste good? Nasty. Okay. <laughs> now, you, uh, you may say this one is good. If you take some raw eggs and eat it, would you say that's good? I don't have any Rocky in me, so no, okay. it's not good. <laughs> now, what about flour itself? No. You, you wouldn't eat it. But if you mix all three of those ingredients together to make a bread or a cake, that would be something great. Something you would great. eat it. Great. Each one of our experiences <laughs> that we go through, we don't like it. That's right. But those experiences that we're going through is making who we are today. That's right. So we got to embrace the experiences that we go through. That's why his thoughts are not our thoughts. Our ways are not our ways. The, higher, the heavens are higher than the earth. If we embrace what we go through, and we know that that is God's will for the experience that we're going through, those hard times, those tribulations, then we're going to know the finished product is going to be something great right. that we know that God is the potter and we're just the clay. That's He's right. going to make us and mold us in the way that he wants us to be. That's right. And God's covering over this school is the most important fact that he's able to put Chris in this, in this position and the staff that's, that's with him 
to help, help these kids flourish because these are his children and he cares about them just as much as he cares about us individually. And so that's what you guys need to see about this big picture is that it's about the whole organization and these kids and these parents as well. I know we talk about kids a lot, but we cannot skip over the parents because they have a lot of impact on these kids, Correct. okay? 18 years, these kids are with these parents. So the first impact and everything they see, their opportunity they see in their parents. If they see their parents stri striving for more, the kids will strive for more because they know that they can see it. That's their first visual. So if the parents aren't there, then they, they feel that despair as well. So even helping the parents get to where they need to be in the family unit is where all this comes to, comes to play. And this is why this is so important, everybody. Now, tell, talk to me about one service that you guys are able to help realign this purpose with this family and kids specifically. One service that we offer is our early childhood education service, which offers um, preschool environment, preschool learning for ages three to five. Um, the school day hours are from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then we also have a model that's called the Kathy Scholars Academy, okay. where we concentrate on, like I said before, childhood obesity. We concentrate on taking what the child learned in the classroom and just put it to life. Mm. Teaching them about the math or measurements or Let's say that they learn um, one plus one equals two. We take that, and I told you earlier about we teaching them how to cook. How many teaspoons it take? Let's take two teaspoons of this. One, two. Yeah. So we take we simplify it to that to, to the simplest amount so it could just resonate with the child. Sure. We talk about where foods come from, the, the different food groups, where it comes from. So we're teaching that in the after school model of, of KSA of now let's actually put this into real life. Let's take this seed and let's grow it. Now watch over time of how it's going to sprout out and to grow into something that that seed was meant to be. Yes. So that's one of our, a couple of our services that we offer. Uh, we also, what I didn't tell you about was, is, is that, you know, I and, and my friend Jermaine, we mentor these young men on the sports side of things, of how do we get these children engaged in life, for one, but then in the sports atmosphere to help them get college scholarships to go on. Mm. So we're impacting families from a whole different wide range. We're gonna take them from, from birth all the way to 18 for the mentorship. We have that program as well. Okay. So tell me, um, and actually I want to go to Jermaine real quick and actually um, talk about the childhood obesity. How long have you been doing that program? I've been doing the program for about seven years now directly. Okay. It's always been a passion of mine, even since I was a junior in high school. I was a track and field coach in my city of Rochester, New York. Since you've been doing it, what impact have you seen in the child's confidence since you've been doing that? It, you know, it differs every day, as, as what Chris is speaking about. Every child, every family is different because we, we deal with so many different areas. So when you get a child that comes from a background that has only been taught to nurture that the food that they eat is good for them because they've been taught these characteristics of cleaning your plate versus understanding the characteristics of what kind of energy is filled in those type of foods. When you see the light bulb go off, when they understand now I can reach for an apple, I can pull for mm. a tomato, yeah. and an onion comes from here, you, you, you see the light bulb go off because a lot of these families are dealing with individuals who provide the labor to bring those ingredients to a table. So it's that full circle, or you talk about the family unit, yes. they understand that their uncle may, when he goes out and he's picking and he's bringing food home, that that's the true reason why, so he can bring it to the table. That's it. So on, on behalf of Executive Talk, we'd like to thank you for the services, specifically for what you do in the school. So thank, thank you. you, thank, thank you. you. You know, one thing that I loved about what Jermaine said is the light bulb comes on. Mm -hmm. The light bulb, all right? So once when they were dark and they felt like there was no hope, they got to see another opportunity which provided hope, which provided faith. So that's awesome as to what you do. So continue, continue to do that. So what type of community support do you need, Chris, going forward to help your, to help this organization? Because obviously your organization is fairly big. How can the community, how can business owners start crowding around you to help you and everything that you need to do flourish? Great question, Maurice. Of course, always take the paper. 
<laughs> we love okay. money, okay? <laughs> we are a 95% federally funded program. We are in the throes of what's happening in the government. Mm -hmm. Just on this past Wednesday, we lost a $2 million annual grant starting April 30th. So, like I said, the economy, the, the environment that is happening in D.C. is really greatly affecting us. This program was a migrant seasonal Head Start program. So, earlier when I talked to you about how we first started our company was the migrant farm workers. So those farm workers would go work in the farm. They would take, bring their little child, their children with them to be there and work in the farms with them. We would say, don't take them to the farms. Take them to our school. And as we can continue to educate that child, that program has been taken away from us. We have four locations, Greeley, Brighton, Grand Junction, and Olathe. Mm. Now we're going, we cannot serve the community the way we want to serve the community for that program. Also, what we would, besides money, we also need manpower. We need the community support to come in and help volunteer. Whatever you're calling or whatever you feel the tug or nudge to do, come and do it for, with us. If you feel the need to want to read to a child, we accept that. If you want to help do help paint the classroom, we will accept that. If you want to help do um, be be a help be a chaperone on field trips, we will accept that. Whatever the case may be, we also want community partnerships. If you are a doctor, we want to be able to help give some medical services to these children and families. We will accept that. If you're a dentist, <laughs> same thing applies. Whatever you're calling to be, I guarantee you that we can use you. Gotcha. All right, so you know if you fit in those categories, this is where you come. I want to give you guys uh, Chris's contact information so that way you guys can get a hold of him. His email is chall at rmser.org, phone number 303-480-9394 and website httprmser.org. So, my final thoughts for everybody. This is where, as a community, we need to come together. You guys heard the emergency. This is, this is where we can come together and really help these families out as a whole through this school. I wanna thank you, Chris, for all that you do. Thank you for and having us And we honor that, here. absolutely. And Executive Talk will be a forever partner. We're actually gonna have, we're gonna have them on every single month to continue the conversation and make sure that you guys know who we are. But please continuously follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and all our social media profiles so that way we can keep the conversation going. But in the meantime, Chris and I, we actually have to get back to work. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Chris. We don't went too fast. <laughs>